Hey guys, welcome back. Woody here. Uh, we are in the middle of making a series of short, short videos, training videos on how to do a cast with a mold. So far, if you're just catching up with us, the first video was a short arm cast with an interosseous mold. The second video, which we just completed, was a short arm cast with an ulnar deviation. This one, I'm gonna have the gentleman pan around to the cast that we're talking about. We did a cast with an ulnar deviation, which you can see here, which is starting to set up really, really nicely. And I promised at the end of the previous video that we would go into how to do the similar type cast, but also with a volar mold to it. Many, many times when you're working with a surgeon, a provider, they're gonna start you off, they're gonna say, hey, I want an interosseous mold. And we all know how to do an interosseous mold after watching that video. You basically, I'm gonna turn it this way so you can see, we're basically pancaking the cast flat, just like that, interosseous mold. So the doc comes back in and he or she's like, hey, you know what, Woody, I love it, it looks great, but you know what, I was looking at the x-ray and you know, I got a little alignment issue here with the radius. Let's go ahead and do a, let's do a little, do a little volar deviation, shall we? And you go in there and you start doing a little volar deviation. Well, he consults, or he or she, they consult with the surgeon they're sitting next to, and the surgeon they're sitting next to, they go, you know what, I like the cast, I like the mold you've done so far, but you know what, I think just for security reasons, I think you might want to do a little volar bend in there as well. So we did the, we did the inner osseous, we did the, we did the ulnar deviation, but let's go ahead and do a volar mold, Woody, and they'll measure it. On, with their measuring tool there on the screen, the, the, the radiology screen, and they'll measure however many centimeters, and they'll, they'll put a mark, usually the surgeon will put a mark at about where they want you to apply pressure for that volar mold. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna take the butt of, of the, the palm, whatever hand you're using, whether you're left-handed or right-handed, you're gonna put it on the palmer surface of the forearm or the wrist, wherever the doctor tells you to put it. You're not gonna guess it. More. 99% of the time they're going to mark it for you. So you're going to put the butt of your hand right in there and you're going to put the palm of your hand. So if, if go ahead and keep your arm there for a minute. If you can imagine to yourself you're making this kind of a cup. You're making this kind of a cup right here. But you have his arm in between that cup. So in other words, here's the bottom part of the cup, here's the top part of the cup, and you're now doing a volar mold just like this. And you're going to hold it till the cast starts to cure. And every now and then you can move your gloves and you can kind of rub it and stuff so your gloves don't get stuck to the cast. Now, this is really, really important. There are some surgeons out there that will not call this a volar mold. They will call this, they will call this an, uh, a dorsal apex mold. It's the same thing. Just think in your head, think of the words. Dorsal, this is the dorsal surface, apex apex. So there's your apex, right? So there are some surges that will call this a dorsal apex mold because that's what you're making it look like. You're making it look like the apex of the dorsal surface of the two long bones. That is the other name for this. But I have found in many, many years of doing this, the more common name is a volar mold. Some things to remember when you're doing this, this is really important, guys. This is super important. You don't want to do a super, super hard mold. If you, if you start to see some creases, you don't want to compromise the circulation. You don't want to, you don't, you don't want to cause any numbness, and you definitely don't want to put any finger indentions in there. So you don't want to use, if you're going to use your fingers for more leverage, don't use them very, very tightly. Just use them, but keep, continue to move them around so you don't leave finger indentions in there. We all know that if you leave finger indentions, you're creating what we call hot spots. And you don't want hot spots because the patient's gonna come back. They're gonna have hot spots and they're gonna to have to change the cast and do it all over again. And it's gonna make it look like you don't know what you're doing. It's gonna make it look like you don't know how to do a proper mold. So when you do your molds, open-handed, use the, use the flat surfaces of your hand to make your molds. I'll turn it this way so you can see a little bit. You make use, use the flat part of your hand. In this particular case, inner osseous mold, open your fingers for me, you can see here an ulnar deviated mold and you can see here a volar mold. 
the only mold that we didn't put in here and we can't now because we've already established that 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 volar mold is what we call a dorsal mold a dorsal mold is the exact opposite of this mold here you would put you would instead of having the meaty part of your thumb here you would have it here and you would do the same exact cupping position just in the opposite direction this part would be bent down and that is called a dorsal mold or like i said there are surgeons that would call it if this was in reverse and and the bend was going that direction instead of coming this direction it would be called a volar apex mold so this right here this this is the closing of three molds th uh, three videos this is the third of three videos that involve all three molds the inner osseous the deviated ulna and the volar so for the viewer that requested uh, the, the cast videos with molds I hope this satisfies your request this is only the series of upper extremity molds we still have to make a series of lower extremity molds which will be coming up next uh, in that series we will talk about how to do the gastroc mold how to do the triangle mold over the tibia how to do the the malleoli mold with your thumbs so that it rests really nice and comfortable over the ankle bones and how to do how to do the nice rear posterior crease at the the little triangle crease at the achilles we will talk about all those in the next set of videos uh, with cast with molds thanks a lot for joining us thumbs up